Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to stroke shapes in GIMP. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.30, which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that guys, don't forget to check out my website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in my GIMP 2.10 masterclass from beginner to pro photo editing on Udemy. And you can get more by becoming a DMD premium member and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here I am inside of GIMP. Here's the composition we'll be working with for today's tutorial. I've had some people ask me in my tutorials where I show you how to draw shapes in GIMP. How do you stroke those shapes to sort of create frames or just, you know, have an empty shape with a stroke around it? Well, I'll show you how to do exactly that. So for starters, come over here and click to create a new layer. And I'll just name this shape stroke. I'm going to fill it with transparency and click OK. So here's that layer. Let me just shift click on this up arrow to bring it to the very top of the layers panel. And by the way, your layers panel might be down here. But now what I'll do is I'll come over to my toolbox and grab one of the shape selection tools in GIMP. So if I hit the R key, that will grab the rectangle select tool, or I can click and hold and release my mouse on the ellipse select if I want to draw an ellipse. And what I can do is click and drag to start drawing the shape. If I hold control, it'll draw from the center. Hold shift, it'll fix the aspect ratio to one to one or whatever this value is set over here. By default, it's set to one to one. But when I release my mouse, it'll draw my rectangle shape. So of course, to fill this in, all I'd have to do is click and drag a color from my swatches and that would fill that in. But how do you stroke this? So to stroke it, come over here to your paths tab and come over here and you're going to click to convert the selection to a path. So it says selection to path. So now we have a path here. Make sure you deselect the selection area you can do that by going to select none or use the shortcut key shift control A. So that will deselect that. Now if I come over here to my paths tab, I can unhide this path. You'll see there's a path around it now. And now to draw a stroke around it, I'll come over here to the icon that says paint along the path at the bottom of the paths panel. So paint along path, that's gonna bring up the choose stroke style dialog. And you'll see here it says stroke path and you can choose from a variety of, of uh, settings here. So you've got solid color. You can use a pattern. It's just going to use whatever your current active pattern is. You can see that right here in my GIMP. Anti-aliasing is just going to be for smoothing. So anytime you have a rounded corner, which this is a square, so we don't really have rounded corners right now. You could change the line width. So right now this is set to six pixels. I can up this to something like 15 pixels if I want. And then you've got a little drop down here, a plus icon. When I click it, that's going to expand this and show all the options here. So we've got some additional options, including the cap style. That's basically going to be whenever the line just ends. In this case, the line is continuous, so that doesn't really apply. Join style is for whenever there's a joint, like right here, there's a joint. So we can either have this be perfectly cornered or we can round it off a little bit or we can have a beveled edge going around the corner. So let's just round it a little bit. Miter limit is whenever your line is like changing direction. The miter limit just sets how far out the corner can stick out. So I'll just keep that set to the default at 10. If you want to draw a custom dash pattern, you can do so here by clicking on this little dash pattern uh, portion right here. It's like a little graph. If you click and drag your mouse, you'll see it'll replace this. And if you drag to the left, it's actually going to get rid of it. So whenever you click and drag on the empty portion, it'll fill it back in. And then you have dash presets. So you can always change this to a preset. So for example, dense dots is in here and you've got short dashes or you can go with just a straight line which is what I'll go for this example. So the stroke color is going to be whatever your foreground color is set to which right now it's a dark green. So if I wanted to change this I can click on this little icon to reset my colors and flip this over to white or I can just click on the swatch here and choose a color manually. I can also input values here for RGB or HTML notation. 
but I'll just stick with white for this and click OK. So whatever your foreground swatch is set to will be the color of your stroke. And once you're ready, come over here and click stroke. And it's going to stroke that line on whatever layer you're on. So if we come back over here to the layers panel, you're going to see the shape stroke layer has both the shape that we filled in. So the green square and it has the stroke on the same layer. So if I wanted those to be on separate layers, I can hit control Z to back up, create a new layer and we'll name this shape stroke. We'll just name this one shape by double clicking the layer name. So make sure you're on shape stroke as your active layer. Come back to the pass tab, stroke this. All your settings from before will still be here. So I'll hit stroke again. And now our stroke is going to be on a separate layer so we can show or hide it. I can hit the M key and I can move it if I wanted to start styling it a bit. And by the way, the path is still showing here so I can come back to the pass tab and hide that path to get rid of that. But there you can see we have a cool effect there. So let me just demonstrate that one more time with the circle. So let me hide these two layers, create a new layer and we'll name this circle, hit the enter key. We'll click and hold to grab the ellipse select tool and I'm going to click and drag my mouse over the guide I created earlier. I'll hold control and hold shift and that's going to draw from the center and draw with a one to one aspect ratio. I'll release my mouse. So there we have our shape. Let me just fill this in with the green color I used before. This might be the lighter one. Oh no, that's the darker one. So click and drag to fill that in. So keep the selection area there. We'll come to the Pass tab. Click to convert the selection to Path. And Control shift a to deselect that. And now I'm going to jump back over to the Layers panel. Click to create a new layer and name this Circle Stroke. Click OK. Come back to the Path tab. On the circular path there, we're going to come down here and click Paint along the path. Let's come over here. Reset the colors. If I hit the X key, it'll switch to white. Click stroke. And now we have a stroke around our circle. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.